Uh, I'll introduce myself a little bit. I am a teaching professor at UC Santa Cruz. <clears throat> Pardon me. Before that, I did, uh, I did this GDC thing for, I don't know, 25 years. I made games for a long time, worked at EA, Sony, places like that. Um, and now <clears throat> at UC Santa Cruz, uh, my primary role is as an instructor for a uh, professional master's program <clears throat> Sorry, in game development. And I feel super accountable right now because like four of my students are sitting right here, which I did not expect. <laughs> and don't be embarrassed. Here's my story. Um, due to some uh, personnel is situations that don't matter, I ended up volunteering uh, per my department chair, which if you know what volunteering looks like when your department chair comes to you, um, to teach a uh, introductory computer programming class in the fall and winter quarters at uh, this master's program that I'm a part of. Um, now, the number of computer programming classes I had taught before was zero. The number of computer programming classes I have taken before, same number, zero. I actually had no idea what I was doing, but you know, whatever. I'll, it'll be all, what could go wrong? <laughs> So I went through a little process. Uh, I'm a game designer, so I said, well, I'll take my design kind of ideas of how I like to do things. I asked a lot of my friends who are game programmers, what do you think someone should know? I looked through some uh, other syllabi that I can find online, looked through other people, put together a bunch of learning goals, here we go. And the one thing I wanted to do, given who we had, and just to set the stage a little bit, the people who were gonna be in this class, introductory programming, a number of them had never programmed at all before. A number of them didn't want to program. <laughs> I had one in particular uh, who was actually actively hostile to the idea of having to take this programming class. But they all considered themselves in one way or another creatives. Okay, so let's work with that. So the first decision I made was, we're not gonna start with Hello World. Now, there's a large group of people for whom this is very motivating. It says, hello world on the screen. It's magic, you know, and hey, here's Brian Kernigan's writing hello world. That's like a Honus Wagner card, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but there's a lot of people from that's actually not motivating at all. And so we didn't do that. Um, we did make a painting instead of hello world. This was the first assignment of the class. Um, we did this in processing. So those Ursula already referenced processing. Um, if you don't know processing, you need to start learning about processing now. And um, I guess what this was like a three-day assignment, something like that. Go make a thing and come back with it. And you had to write the tool to do the painting. But what you turned in was not the tool. What you turned in was the painting. So you wrote the code for that. Then things got, started to get a little weird. Um, each time, uh, what I'm going to do is actually just walk through just a little selection of some of the assignments that we did for the class. Each of the assignments was based on some pedagogical goal of some sort, again, based on this list of, of learning goals that I had created for the class. So this one, and uh, Ursula and I were talking about this yesterday, like movement and collision, right? This is a really good place to start when you're thinking about games. And so I had this great idea, like, well, what if it was like raindrops falling and you're trying to catch them in a bucket, which I realized later that apparently everybody does. <laughs> But I felt really smart, and I put it out there. I said, okay, this is the task. It's raindrops in a bucket. We actually went through in class how to write the basics of the code. And I said, okay, now you all go do it. But I don't want to see any raindrops in buckets. So you can, hopefully you can see it here. I don't know how well you can see the, uh, the two things going on. So the one on the right is kind of like the code we did in class, except he said, I don't like rain, you don't want raindrops in a bucket? Okay, the whole task is to avoid the raindrops with the bucket. What do you think about that? So, well, you're still doing movement and collision, sounds great. Um, and then the one on the left is, uh, you're catching eggs for breakfast, because I guess this person woke up quite hungry one day and just decided this was what to do, and it's doing horrible egg puns in the console window, which uh, hopefully, I guess you can't read, it's too bad. It's just like, that was excellent, <laughs> like, stuff like that. It's like, sure. Cool, Ernest. <laughs> I have to admit, I played it for like 15 minutes in hopes of seeing them all. <laughs> and then I went and read the code, so I did see them all. Another assignment that we did was a particle system. So we kind of wrote a particle system from scratch, which is a great, uh, not in scratch, from scratch, uh, which is a great way to understand things like um, data structures, right? Like we made an array list of the particles and you had to manage that and that kind of thing. So we wrote a little particle system in class and then, hey, everybody, go write your own particle system. Do, do a thing with a particle system. Um, one of the more popular ones is in the top center. When people get creative, it eventually becomes write what you know. 
Um, this person happens to be the parent of a young child, and apparently this is based on a true, <laughs> a true event uh, where you pat, the, you, you interactively you pat the baby's bottom, and then there's a particle effect. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, that actually apparently happened. Uh, but the other stuff was just really, really pretty and, and just you know, really expressive of these people's ideas. Um, it, was, it was just so inspiring. And by the way, one of the things that is kind of a hot topic right now that I'm suspecting a number of the people in the room here are talking about, especially for undergraduate computer science, is cheating. A lot of nods, right? Big, hot topic. How do we deal with the fact that our students cheat? Well, this was already mentioned, but if you give an assignment where everybody's task is to converge on a single point, you're kind of inviting that to some extent. If you give a task where everybody's given the point and then asked to diverge, it gets a lot harder. And I'm not necessarily saying this is a solution for like your 450 student class, but uh, it certainly would have been pretty obvious if two people had cheated off each other in this particular assignment. Another assignment that we did was um, to kind of emulate the old Atari 2600, yes, I had an Atari 2600, uh, dragster game. And uh, this was just a task to learn things about like how to represent things like acceleration, velocity, friction, uh, using vectors, and uh, managing all that. So I said, well, let's, let's make the dragster game, that'll do it. So one person made the dragster game. I guess he went and found the, the assets online. Other people did things that were a little different. Um, in particular, I was a big fan of the, the voxel snail. That's made by Eunice, she's right here. You might be able to tell that this assignment came directly after the particles assignment, because <laughs> everybody decided they would put particles and crash their dragsters, <laughs> which was not actually part of the assignment, but um, I guess it made it, did it make it better? Yeah, it made it better, okay, cool. Um, the last one I'll show you is, uh, those of you that have maybe walked through a Unity tutorial at some point in your life, uh, the first thing that's often taught is a 2D shoot 'em up, right? I got a spaceship, it moves left and right. Maybe if I'm getting fancy, it moves up and down. It shoots lasers at meteors. Okay, so we went through like how you would do that in Unity, because the first part of the class we did in processing, second part in Unity. And I said, okay, we did that. We made a space shooter. Now your assignment is to go do a space shooter except no space, no lasers, no meteors, and no spaceships, go. Got a lot of interesting things, this is by far my favorite. So if you can watch, I put up two, this is actually two instances of the same game. You're driving the little block around, you're shooting words, and you're making little lines of a poem, and then you, once you get three lines, it gives it to you as your result. So this is actually all the mechanics of a 2D shoot 'em up but it's a poetry simulator. I did not expect that, and it was wonderful. So, I don't know, I mean, at this point I'm really saying, what I'm doing is bragging all the stuff that the students did. <laughs> but I decided to get have some fun too. Um, th these were uh, my midterm and my final from this corner, <clears throat> where I made these particular uh, bits of, of software. And uh, one of the tasks that I would do is I would give the software to the students on a printed sheet of paper, and I would say, please describe in detail what it does. So uh, the one on the left, um, if you see the tail growing, well, we're doing that with a stack, right? Pop, push, 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 pop, pop, pop. Um, and then the one on the right actually was from the final earlier this week, um, which was uh, about, mostly about uh, AI. But I just, I couldn't help it. Like, they were having too much fun. I wasn't gonna write some boring assignment and like, you know, how do you resolve this recursive thing? No, we're gonna make, make Nyan Cat with a tail. Ultimately, I now learned this week that this is called construction <laughs> as a learning environment. And um, I think it went actually pretty well. And we, we got through um, the majority of the, of the learning tasks that I wanted to get to. In some cases, we got to more. Um, do you guys feel comfortable with vectors now? Yes because vectors are good. Um, and and I, I think everybody had fun, um, at least I hope so. I think, well, I say that with the, um, the final assignment was due at midnight last night, so it might not be the best time to say that. Um, <clears throat> but these were just a few of the bits of feedback that I got uh, from the students. Uh, my favorite being that someone said I actually like object-oriented programming, <laughs> which is like, 
wow, that's weird. <laughs> You're an artist. <laughs> um, so this is kind of the way I sum this up. I actually was writing this, uh, choosing this uh, proverb from my perspective, which is I came into this uh, project of I'm going to teach this class from a perspective of I know nothing. I am an idiot that we've decided to do this. I wonder how this will all go. I was terrified. Um, but hey, you know, let's try something fun. Let's design something. Um, in fact, I think that this same concept applies to the students. They're learning a concept for the first time. We're just learning how to do a particular data structure and some, maybe some physics calculations. Okay, we're gonna make particles. What are you gonna do with particles? Like, their minds immediately exploded into all kinds of crazy things. Exploded, that was an accident. Uh, into all kinds of crazy things, and in some cases, things that were really quite funny. So that's my story, uh, and I'm sticking with it. And um, I'll, I'm going to be happy to share, actually, the, the, uh, the particular set of assignments with anybody that's curious. Thanks. <laughs>